What is up everybody? My name is Adrian. I'm from No Counters No Combos and today I'm going to be doing a special guest upload on Eggman's channel. Shout out to you my man. A pretty good friend of mine. He's part of the Super Trooper organization and he's going to be going to Chicago this weekend for celebrations so you guys should all lend him his energy um, but we're going to get right into it. It's going to be a little special video something Eggman and I have been working on not together but separately over the time but um, it's going to be Bojack related and I'm just going to kind of show some of the bits and pieces as to how the deck runs and some of the better stronger combos in the deck. Um, if you guys are interested in this Piccolo hat, um, I actually picked it up at a GameStop. So check out your local GameStop. They might have it. You know, it's pretty dope. The ears and the top of the head and everything. But and it's actually pretty warm too. So if you guys like Piccolo, he's one of my favorite characters. So I figured I'd pick this up. But uh, without further ado, let's get right into the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy this special guest upload from No Counters, No Combos on Eggman's channel. Stay tuned. Okay, so like we said before, um, I'm going to be showing some of the plays that you can do with the Bojack deck. Um, just kind of mainly going over what are some of the better cards to start your opening hand with, uh, the mulligan phase, and uh, just some nifty combos or some cute plays that you can make um, for those of you who have tried playing Bojack and are having some trouble with the deck. 100% um, it's not autopilot. It does require some skill and some understanding of the cards. I'm not claiming to be the best Bojack player ever, um, but I have been playing this deck for quite some time. So I figured um, I'd just kind of go through some of the motions. And if you guys find this helpful, then you know we could do definitely do this again in the future, both on Eggman's channel and on our channel at No Counters, No Combos. So obviously you have the leader. I'm just going to go ahead and, and shuffle some of these cards up and see you know what, what our opening hand is. I'm just going to put the leader to the side here. Uh, this is pretty much just going to be an open thing. It's not going to be formal or anything like that. I'm just going to place my deck on the table here and just draw six cards. Five, six now. So we can see here that this is our opening hand. And hopefully that's in frame for all you guys to see. Uh, let me see if I can make it a little more centered for everyone to see. Um, so we were able to open Arrival of the Space Pirates, Solar Flare, Space Pirate, Gokua, Merciless Strike, Zang Zangia, which is your super combo, another Arrival of the Space Pirates, and your three drop Bojack. So if I open with this hand, um, immediately I'm 100% keeping Arrival of the Space Pirates because I don't have a turn one play, so Arrival of the Space Pirates gives me a turn one. Uh, the other thing I might keep as well is this Bojack, I'm, I'm sorry, this Gokua and this Bojack combination. Now, the reason I want to do that is because I'm, I'm trying to play as much resources to the board as possible without uh, using a lot of energy. So, for example, Arrival of the Space Pirates is going to fetch me something from my deck and then allow me to do an extension of a play. So we're going to keep this hand here. We're going to shuffle these three cards back because we don't need them. Obviously, we're assuming that we're going to be going first. So I'm assuming that I'm going first. I won the die roll, and I'm going to be... This is the mulligan phase now. So I've kept three cards in my hand. I'm going to shuffle and you know present my deck to my opponent to cut and then draw three more cards. So one, two, three. Now, this is our official opening hand. Um, and then what we're going to do is I'm just going to take eight cards here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, perfect. I'm just going to take eight cards in a stack and put them to the side. So that'll be like our life total or whatever. Uh, if you guys can see it, great. If not, it's not that big of a deal because it's off to the side here. Life is not going to take too much, you know, time into this or whatnot because we're just going to kind of go over some turn procedure here. So this is my opening hand after the mulligan phase. Um... So looking at it, it's it's pretty good. Um, there are a couple things you can do. It depends on how you want to sequence everything out. If you're going first, you have three options. Let's, uh, let's do this. So it depends on how you want to do it. Um, you have three options for turn one. And obviously you do have to consider what cards you're going to charge. So before we go into any plays, I'm 100% going to be charging this... Um, this Gokua here. So I'm charging the Gokua to give myself one yellow energy. 
And like I said, hopefully you guys can see. Let's move Bojack over because he's less important than our actual hand. So I'm left with five cards in my hand. So you have two routes that you can go. You can tap the yellow energy to play Arrival of the Space Pirates and fetch something from your deck. Or you can just go ahead and play your Beto um, to look at the top five. So for me specifically, if I'm going turn one, um, I'm probably going to go ahead and tap the one energy to play Arrival of the Space Pirates. Okay, So Arrival of the Space Pirates is going to allow me to um, search a, <clears throat> a two drop from my deck and play it in rest mode. So I'm 100% gonna search for Space Pirate Zangia. Now, when I play Space Pirate Zangia, you have to shuffle, of course, because you know it's part of the completion of the effect. Um, so when I go into this into this play here, um, I'm gonna put Space Pirate Zangia on the board. I'm gonna put my drop off to the side here. Okay, now this, because I played a Bojack Brigade to the to the board, this is going to set my leader's ability into pending. Now remember, because you're turn player, you can resolve your autos in whichever order you choose to. Uh, I'm the type of person that I want to deck thin as much as I possibly can before just free drawing, because this will allow me to search specific pieces, whereas drawing is just a random choice. So Zhangya's auto is going to proc, which allows me to get a one drop from the deck and play it. So in this specific situation, I'm going to go ahead and go into the one drop Bujin from my deck, right? So I'm going to play the Bujin. Now Bujin's auto is going to proc, which allows me to play a two drop Space Pirate from my hand or Bojack Brigade from my hand which I'm going to resolve and bring out the Gokua. So this is my turn one. I'm also going to proc my, my Bojack auto to draw a card. So that's my hand now. Bojack's at 15k. doesn't matter because we're going, we're going first, so we're not attacking. But this is my board turn one. Now it's, I'm going to pass turn to my opponent, of course. And um, they're going to go ahead and do what they have to do. Depending on what matchups you're playing, you don't want to take too much damage. But let's say for, for argument's sake, we're playing a slower deck, a setup deck. Let's say we're playing Janemba. Um, so let's say we're playing Janemba. So Janemba's going to charge. They're going to swing at us. So we're going to mill two off the top, which we milled the Crusher Ball in a super combo. doesn't matter. And they're most likely going to swing at our battle card because they don't want to give you um, resources, right? So that's fine. We'll allow this card to, to die or whatever. And we've already milled two, so now they're going to pass turn. We're going to draw for turn. We're going to untap our energy. And then we're going to go into turn two. So now we're looking at our hand for what we want to charge, okay? So these the one drops, you want to try to keep them as... You want to keep your one drops, as many of them, out of energy as possible. So I'm going turn two here. Um, I see that I have another Gokua. Now he's pretty much, he's okay, but I do have two Bojacks. So knowing that the card economy in the deck, I'm only playing four of this card and there's already three on the field. I'm going to go ahead and charge the Bojack. Now for some of you that might be questionable, but for me, I know that I'm playing four copies of Space Pirate and four copies of the Destruction Rare. So that's totally fine. I'm not really negging a resource there. Now what this is going to allow me to do is one of two things. I can be aggressive and attack first and then deplete my resources after um, or I can tap out and, and go you know completely ham so at this point what I'm gonna do um, for this specific situation is I'm gonna go ahead and tap the one energy to play space pirate Beto now the space pirate Beto is gonna proc allowing me to look at the top five of my deck and add a card to my hand so what we revealed we revealed solar flare uh, merciless farewell super combo Beto and our eight drop so I'm going to snap add this card to my hand because you want to get that card in your hand as soon as possible because it's part of your win condition, right? So I'm going to add that to my hand. I haven't seen any copies. There could be some in life. So I'm not going to play any games. I'm not going to play any RNG knowing Janemba is going to mill my stuff. So we're going to go ahead and add our 8-drop to our hand. Now this is going to put Bojack's auto in pending, but it's okay to go ahead and draw because there's not going to be any more extension going forward. So we're going to go ahead and draw our one card and we drew into our Roshi Negate. So now what I could do is I could swing at Janemba with Gokua, 15k to 10k. Most likely it's a damage they'll take because 
it's early on. So let's say, for example, they take that damage and go down to seven. Now what I can do is I can pay the one energy to um, send Gokua to the drop area to play a Bojack from my hand. So this allows me to play Bojack from my hand. Now when he comes out, I can discard a card to add Arrival of the Space Pirates. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to discard this Gokua. And then we're going to go ahead and add a Rowell from the, of the Space Pirates back to our hand. So we're tapped out. We have a 19k Beater on board. We have Beto and we have Bujin on board. Now, because you're playing against Janemba and they're only going into their second turn, I'm going to say it's okay for you to swing with Leader for 15k and then swing at Leader with 19k Bojack. The reason I'm saying that is because there's not going to be too many threats that Janemba can play out on you to kill this Bojack. And even if he does... Bojack's auto is you can sacrifice one of your other space pirates to, to keep him from being KO'd. So that's pretty much your early setup. And then from here, you just kind of continue to play the grind that is um, the space pirate Bojack Brigade archetype. So now for your next turn, it's turn three is an awkward turn because it's just more of the same with the little guys. Turn four is going to be your big turn because you're going to tap out for your eight drop. So this is kind of like how you want to open the game. Another really good combo uh, for, for, for opening the game is let's say um, you go first again on turn one. And let's say your hand is, we don't really need specific card. We need specific cards for this demonstration. So I'm just going to go ahead and fetch them. So your, your turn one play, uh, you want to go ahead and get, you want this, you want Beto, and you want Zhangya in your hand. And the rest of the cards don't really matter. So you want this. This is your the combination. And then you just want like a, a random yellow card to charge. So let's just pick a Roshi, right? And then, you know, we'll, whatever, we'll just put one, two, three, four, five. We'll just put six random cards in our hand. So this is what you want as your open, whatever. It does Like I said, the only cards that matter are these two cards right here and whatever you're going to charge. So a nice play that I like to do turn one, especially if I'm going first because it sets up your board pretty good. Uh, we're going to charge an energy. Um, I'm going to charge an energy. We're going to tap the energy to play, to play Bujin. And then Bujin's, Bojack is going to go into pending. Bujin's auto is going to resolve, bringing out Zhangya. Zhangya is going to go into auto. And I'm going to go ahead and bring out <clears throat> Beto because it's a one drop. Where are you, Beto? So now B Beto's going to come out after Zhangya, after Zhangya's effect resolves. I'm gonna don't worry, I'm gonna move everything over so you guys can see better. After Zhangya effects resolve, Buj uh, Beto is gonna go into pending, looking at top five, three, four, five. And we're just gonna go ahead and in this case, it doesn't really matter what you add, but the better add is is this Bujin here, because you can play the Goku off of it. So we're gonna go into there. Beto's effect is gonna resolve. We're gonna shuffle our deck once more. And then we're going to proc our Bojack, drawing us another card. So this is my favorite turn one play because you have three cards on board that you can combo with. And depending on what you have in your hand, you can play defense early. And I did mention in, in my video on my channel, No Counters, No Combos, when I did the Bojack deck profile, is you want to defend your life as early as possible. You are tapped out, but it's okay. So in this specific situation, if you're playing against Janemba, he's going to go attack your leader. You do have the, because nothing's in rest mode, you do have the option of taking the life or comboing out. So in, in that situation, what I would do is I would combo the Bujin to save myself from taking the damage. Yes, I'm going to mill two cards, of course, because of Janemba's effect. But I'm going to save myself from taking the damage because you can only have uh, one of each space pirate on the board at a time, except for Gokua and, and the Bojacks. But Beto, Zhangya, and Bujin can only be one copy per turn. Uh, per you know per presence on the board. So I noticed that I have another Bujin here in hand. So I'm going to combo that one off. Janemba's going to pass. I'm going to draw for turn. Untap. Let's actually untap first, then draw. And then we're going to go ahead and charge. So in this situation, playing against Janemba, we're going to charge the time magic because Crusher Ball is, is kind of decent for certain cards. Not for their deflect cards, obviously. But I'm going to go ahead and charge the time magic. I do have a Roshi in case I need it. And I'm going to go ahead and continue my play. So what I'm going to do is tap the one energy to play Bujin. He's going to go into pending. Bujin's going to resolve, bringing out Gokua. I'm going to draw a card off Bojack. And I drew my Merciless Farewell. Now the best, the best scenario for this would have been if you had a Bojack in your hand. 
uh, a three drop, either the, the the destruction rare or the regular rare Bojack. It would have been better to have because you still have one energy open, so you can swing with your Gokua and then tap the energy to bring out the Bojack. But in this instance, we don't have it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put early pressure on Janemba, swinging with Gokua and swinging with Bojack, and then leaving my energy open for defense, whether it's Crusher Ball or um, Master Roshi for a negate. So. And, of course, you have the Merciless Farewell, which is you know, a pretty decent card as well. I mean, turn two, Janemba's not really doing much except setting up as well anyway. So, I like the deck. I mean, I think uh, I think the biggest problem with this deck is that it's too fair. I feel like Bandai really, really wanted this deck to be as fair as possible, and they didn't give it anything overwhelmingly powerful. I mean, the leader doesn't have an Awakened skill. You can only control one of each uh, Bojack Brigade at a time. Uh, you know, your super combo is a, a three drop instead of a two drop, so you can't fetch it back with Beto's ability. There's just too many things that, that make this deck too fair. Um, but I do like it. I, I feel like this, this deck is one uh, power booster promo away from being really, really good. Um, hopefully, if they decide that they're going to do set six power boosters, they decide to give Bojack some support because I think he really needs it. But that's pretty much a quick tutorial on how to kind of get the deck started. And then from there, it's just matchup knowledge and, and you know, how you play the game. I mean, you, their RNG is a factor. If you draw good cards, you're just good at this game. Otherwise, you have to grind it out. Bojack's always going to be a grind. That's why there's like 10 negates in the deck. But for the most part, you combo from the board. Um, you swarm the field with little guys just to have like combo power. And then once you get your big guy out, you just kind of have to protect him as much as you can. Playing against Janemba can be tricky because Demon Sword does have built-in removal, but uh, on that turn, when they when they stand up their energy or they stand up their battle cards or whatever the case may be, they're going to have to warp some cards out of their hands. So hopefully it's in your favor, but in the meantime, definitely check it out. Um, this is the build I'm most comfortable with. If I were to make any changes, I was having some discussion um, on my comment section today. Uh, if I were to make any changes, there's a slight possibility I would take the Roshis out to add two, two more Nimbus in the deck. But I like the way Roshi interacts with the deck right now because it gives me another 5k combo on the board. Uh, and it's pretty good energy to charge because it's not the most impactful negate in the deck. So I feel better charging a Roshi than I would charging a Nimbus, a Time Magic, or a Solar Flare. So... With that being said, we're going to get on out of here. Shout out to Eggman. Thank you so much for letting me uh, feature a video here on your channel. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. And if you have some time, come check us out at No Counters, No Combos. Um, and let's wish Eggman some, uh, some great success coming up in these Chicago Celebration events. Let's all send him some energy. And we hope that uh, he has uh, some good fortune when it comes to that tournament over the weekend. So we're going to get on out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time.